Praise all the Father, yeah. Oh, what a wonderful mishpacha that we have. I'm so thankful for all of you, and I'm uh, praying that uh, that our prayers are heard by the Father, that uh, Candace's back will be healed, and Albany's eyes will get stronger, and, and uh, that all of us that reach out to Yahweh will be successful and our prayers will be answered. And notice I'm without <laughs> again tonight. Um, I had uh, a whole lot of things going on and had very little time to attend to myself. It's a good thing that I've got a bath, so uh, praise Abba for that. But um, uh, Abba understands and you all understand. Shalom Marla Vancheck. She just came in and Robert Boyd just came in. Shalom Robert. It's good to see you in here tonight, brother. Praise Abba Father Yahweh. We have got a wonderful um, scripture to study tonight. It's absolutely fantastic and <laughs> it's exciting to me. And uh, I can't help it. I get excited so so easily over Yahweh's word because his word is so full of his ruach. I, I, Feel his ruach you know, when I read and uh, when I study. I enjoy that feeling, and I know that you guys do as well. Appreciate uh, each and every one of you. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and get to our reading screen. I will make mention before we get started with the reading that uh, we are giving away tonight. Um, this is the uh, Name Meanings book from the Hallelujah Scriptures. And uh, next week, we will be giving away a copy of the Hallelujah Scriptures. And let me get that and show it to you as well. It's beautiful. And this will be given away along with a bookmark for the Hallelujah Scriptures. <laughs> and it will be given away along with a name meanings book because you really if you have all the right names in the book you really need the name meanings book as well so that you can get a better hold and understanding of those things so anyway that's that's going to be like a grand prize <laughs> for the things that we've given away so far and i do not know what will happen in the future whether we will give other things away or not but um Abba will, will show us, and time will tell. So, anyway, y'all be in much prayer that, that the name is drawn that uh, needs this the most. <laughs> okay. Praise Abba, Father Yahweh. Well, before we get into our reading, we're reading in uh, Bereshith, that's Genesis, for those of you who don't know, uh, chapter 30 through chapter 32. And uh, praise Abba for his word. But first and foremost, uh, let's remember as we pray, Candace, her back is causing her a lot of problems right now. And uh, continue to pray for Albany, for her, for her eyes. And I hope you're doing better tonight, Albany. I uh, pray that uh, you are. And uh, continue to remember all the others in our Mishpaka. Uh, Lauren is always facing difficulties because of, uh, because of her... Uh, our, uh, what do you call that? <laughs> the uh, blood thing. Um, you know, I'm, I get to a point, sometimes I, I forget simple words. And <laughs> that's, uh, that's easy to do when you get older. Uh, you forget simple words a whole lot. But anyway, let's go to Abba, Father, Yahweh, and a sincere word of prayer. Abba, Father, we are thankful to you 
for your word, for your truth, and, Father, for sharing it with us and giving us, Father, your Ruach HaKodesh that helps us to understand your word. And, Father, when we read and we pray together, we pray, Father, that you will continue to lead and guide and direct us so that we can understand better, so that we can keep your word in our hearts more faithfully. And, Father, that we can also share the truth with others. Um, let's see, is that Milky Girl? No, it's my mother. Hold on, just one moment. Oh, she probably said, oh, he must, must be live streaming. I'll call her back. And if it's emergency, she'll call me again. So that's not a problem. Okay. So we were praying, I think, were we not? <laughs> yes. Well, we'll end the prayer with, uh, Father, we pray through Yeshua HaMashiach with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we pray in the name above all names, Yahweh my Elohim, Yahweh Echad. And all the Mishpachah said, Amen, Amen. Praise Abba. You know, uh, I had somebody say to me um, just yesterday uh, about the name of Yahweh. And he says, you know, well, I've always called him God, and I said, he said, what's the difference? I said, because you know where God comes from? I said, it is the name of Godriel. Do you know who Godriel is? He said, no. I said, that is Hashatan, the enemy. That's his name, is Godriel. We learned that from the book of Hanok. So, uh, he Maybe he thought about it. I hope he's thinking about it more and more. And uh, he says, you know, says, and Jesus, you know, says, I'm used to calling him that. I said, well, I, I got used to calling him that too. And I loved that name for many years because it's all I knew. But when I found the true name, and I know for certain that that was and is his name today, and that Jesus is a name that's only 400 years old, made by man. Um, and I don't mind the name Jesus. It's not something that they're trying to do. It's not, it does not, I don't feel it means uh, hail Zeus or like that. I think that it's just a fact of the matter that the, that the Greek could not say the name Yeshua. They have, they have no Y sound. They have no SH sound. And ah, in an ending of a name, means it's female. So they had their hands full. So, Ie Sua, or Ie Sus, is what they came up with. And I think they did a pretty considerably good job doing the best they could with the difference in the languages. But with English today, we have both the Y sound and we also have the sh sound and ending in the ah sound does not make it female. So we can say his real true name, Yeshua. And that is, uh, and there are variations. People say that's Yahushua and Yahusha. Uh, I don't personally feel that those are correct, but uh, I may, I may learn different one day. But for now, I'll go with the understanding that I have that his name is Yeshua. And of course, the name of the Father is Yahuwah. And uh, I praise him and worship his Kodesh name. So, Shalom Joanne Schultz. She just came in. Praise Abba. <laughs> I've had much problems with my computer and I had to sign in again. Oh, okay. Well, sorry, Joanne, you're having trouble, but... But at least you're here now because we're reading about you. Shalom, Eric Rangel. He came in as well. And uh, if there's any others that have come in and I haven't just noticed, thank you for coming and uh, praise Abba for you, each and every one. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to have to get new glasses because my glasses are not focusing properly on the scriptures that are in front of me. And that's not a good thing when you're reading the scriptures. <laughs> but I'll make them big enough so that it's, it's a little bit easier for me. But uh, y'all pray for me as well and that I'll get good glasses soon when I can get off work. Okay. Better she chapter uh, 30. And when Rachel saw that she bore Yaakov no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Yaakov, Give me children, or else I am going to die. Was she really going to die? No, she was just being emphatic. But Yaakov didn't like that, and he, and his displeasure burned against her, Rachel. And he said, Am I in the place of Elohim who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? And she said, See my female servant Bilhah, go into her and let her bear for me, and let me be built up from her as well. The Hebrew here literally states, Let her bear on my knees. That's what they would do, and they would claim the child for themselves so that she would be built up and build a family through her um, maidservant. So she gave him Bilhah, her female servant, as wife, and Yaakov went into her, and Bilhah conceived and bore, a, bore Yaakov a son. And Rachel said, Elohim has rightly ruled my case, and he has also heard my voice and given me a son. So she called his name Don. And it's pronounced Don like uh, we say the name Donald, Don. And it means judged or vindicated. And Rachel's female servant, Bilhah, conceived again and bore Yaakov a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister, and I have overcome. So she called his name Naphtali. The Hebrew for wrestlings is Naphtuli. So that's very close to the name Naphtali. And Leah saw that she had ceased bearing. And she took Zilpah, her female servant, and gave her to Yaakov as wife. They were having a, a race, uh, Leah and, uh, and uh, Rachel were having a race trying to see who could give the most children to Yaakov. And, well, he just enjoyed himself <laughs> in all of this. And Leah's female servant, Zilpah, bore Yaakov a son, and Leah said, How fortunate! She called his name God. Where have we heard that? Didn't I just speak about that just a few moments ago? God is uh, the name of a God, which is the God of fortune from that day. Paganism is around every turn and know it. And we have to face it. We have to fight it the best way that we can. And that's what we will do. So, and Leah's female servant, Zilpah, bore Yaakov a second son. And Leah said, I am blessed, for the daughter shall call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. The name Asher stems from the word Be'aseri, meaning, I was trying to get this straight, meaning I am happy. And Rehavain went and the days of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them to his mother, Leah. And Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. See, mandrakes are just another name for love apples. And ancient superstitions claim they, or the roots thereof, are beneficial for fertility. Go figure. Leah wants to have more children, and... Uh, Rachel wants to have more children. But she said to her, 
Is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes too? Rachel said, Therefore, let him lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. She just wanted to become fertile again. And when Yaakov came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, Do come into me, for indeed I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And Elohim listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Yaakov a fifth son. And Leah said, Elohim has given me my hire, because I have given my female servant to my husband. So she called his name Yisachar. Yisachar means there is recompense, wages. And Leah conceived again and bore Yaakov a sixth son. Okay, it jumped, but I can see where it jumped to. She bore Yaakov a sixth son, and Leah said, Elohim has presented me with a good present. Now my husband is going to dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun, and Zebulun means exalted. And afterwards she bore a daughter and called her name Dina. And Elohim remembered Rachel, and Elohim listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, Elohim has taken away my reproach. So she called his name Yosef and said, Yahweh has added to me another son. Yosef means literally Yahweh has added in Hebrew. Okay, and it came to be when Rachel had born Yosef that Yaakov said to Lavan, send me on my way to go to my own place and to my land. Now, note, he approached him already. He's already asked him to send him away. So when uh, Yaakov does what he does later, we can probably understand. Give my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you yourself know my service which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, please stay, for I have diligently watched. Okay. I have diligently watched that Yahweh has blessed me for your sake. Some translations say, and I don't refute this, uh, I have learned by divination that Yahweh has blessed me for your sake. And it may be because he was into that sort of thing. His family was into that sort of thing. The father of Abraham, Terach, was into that. So I'm not saying it's an accurate uh, translation, but it's something we all should consider. Uh, remember, Terach, the father of Abraham, had idols which Abraham destroyed before leaving the land of Ur, Ur of the Chaldeans. And he said, Name me your wages, and I give it. So he said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock has been with me. For the little you had before I came increased greatly, and Yahweh has blessed you since my coming. But now, when am I to provide for my own house too? And he said, What do I give you? And Yaakov said, Give me not if you do this for me. I shall again feed and guard your flocks. Let me pass through, your, through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled, and spotted sheep, and all the black ones among the lambs, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and these shall be my wages. Now, mind you that the ones that were spotted and speckled and streaked, those were less likely to occur than the regular type of sheep and goats. So he was showing him uh, that he was going to take the lesser. And uh, the thing is, after that, and we'll read the story, we'll, we'll get it in time, but uh, afterwards, 
Yahweh blessed Yaakov and uh, it actually turned a little sour on Laban. And my righteousness shall answer for me in time to come when you come concerning my wages. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and black among the lambs, if, if it, uh, it is stolen, if it is with me. And Laban said, See, let it be according to your word. And on that day, he, Laban, set aside the male goats. I'm having trouble with this tonight. And I really need more room for my mouse. Okay, I'll get back to it again. And on that day, he, Laban, set aside the male goats that were speckled and spotted and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted every one that had some white in it and uh, all the black ones among the lambs and he gave them into the hand of his sons and he put three days journey between himself and Yaakov and Yaakov fed the rest of Laban's flocks and Yaakov took for himself rods of green poplar and of the almond and the chestnut trees peeled white strips in them and exposed the white which was in the rods. He was exposing the actual wood underneath the bark. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink and they conceived when they came to drink. So the flocks conceived before the rods and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted. And I've looked to see if there was any scientific evidence that that could be done. I didn't find any, but I found spiritual evidence that Yahweh had given him this idea. So, and Yaakov separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the street and all the black in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. And it came to be, Whenever the strong ones of the flock conceived that Yaakov placed the rods before the eyes of the flock in the gutters, so they would conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were weak, he did not put them in, so the weak ones were Laban's and the strong ones Yaakov's. Thus the man increased very much and had many flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Now, I touched on this already, but some of you may be wondering if there's any scientific proof that what Yaakov uh, did with the poplar, almond, and chestnut trees and peeling the bark back to make streaks or spots in the offspring, while there may not be any proof as such, we learn in the following chapter that ya uh, Yaakov was given a dream that showed that the male goats mating with the flock were streaked, speckled, or spotted. A messenger pointed this out to him. Maybe the messenger also told Yaakov to place rods in the watering troughs. But regardless, we see for sure that Yahweh blessed Yaakov. It was Yahweh's doing, and not anything that Yaakov did in particular except be obedient. And he blessed Yaakov in spite of Laban's cheating. And we'll cover that in the chapter coming up. Okay, let me look into the chat for a moment. And uh, let's see if there's any questions or anything, any comments that I need to address. Shalom, uh, Jeremy Calderon. Uh, it's nice to have you in here tonight, brother. And Frank Babcock, shalom, brother. Okay. Okay, you guys are discussing something, but I'm not going to take too much time. So uh, uh, I will address that. You're handling it all well, it seems. Praise Abba Father Yahuwah. And uh, we've got a pretty fair amount to do tonight, so I won't take a whole lot of extra time. Whatever it was, everybody thinks it was Tiffany. <laughs> she hasn't put anything up in a very long time so I'm um, 
I'm hoping and praying that uh, she's okay. And uh, Corban in, is in here, and he says, Shalom, Ken. Shalom, Corban. Nice to see you in here as well, brother. Well, praise Abba, Father Yahweh. Okay. Chapter 31. You know, Chavarin, uh, I hate to go without my dentures at least. And uh, I feel badly about it. But Yahweh does not want me to uh, not go live because I have a problem with my teeth. He doesn't want me to do that. He wants the show to go on. And uh, so, whatever. If I am able to live stream, I am going to live stream because that's Yahweh's command to me. And um, I would hate if if we didn't live stream because of something silly like I've got a, I've got a sore and uh, I've got to remove those for a while and I'll be back with them again next week. But if I am so high strung on myself and how I look or how I sound, and I don't sound terribly bad. I don't enunciate as well as I do when I have them in, but I am not going to pass by the opportunity to share Yahweh's word another week with who knows who all. So, there we go. And that is my heart. I would rather humble myself and do what Yahweh has called me to do than to have great honor and have everybody think well of me. I hope you think well of me, but if you don't, that's between you and Yahweh. I think well of you. <laughs> Praise Abba. And I think well of his word, which I am thrilled and excited that he called me to read. <laughs> Chapter 31. Uh, Hanneke is in there too. Shalom, Hanneke. It's your insight, Ken, your love for Yahweh. You're right, Heineke. That's uh, it's my love for Yahweh. And Tara Skoncharenko uh, says, I love videos, uh, Tiffany's videos on audio study. I do too, Tara, and I've watched all of them. <laughs> I've watched some of them twice, three, and four times. So, <laughs> Robert Alpine Cowboy says, You look great, Ken. You are the only one who notices anything. Thank you, Robert. Uh, that that actually calms me down just a little bit and I, and makes my heart feel better. Dave, Dave and Kelly says, an audience of one, Ken, the only one that matters. There you go. The one that matters is my father who I'm doing this for. I'm being obedient to him. And uh, I'm not doing it for my own honor. Otherwise, I would not be here tonight like this. Uh, I'm doing it for him. And I'm doing it for you because I love you and I, I love him. And we all love each other. And that's what it's all about. And that's what he wants us to have an understanding of. Love each other as you love yourselves. And above and beyond all, love Abba, Father, Yahuwah, with all your heart, with all your mind with all of your strength, with all of your soul. Love, Abba, Father. If I've never said anything important, I just did. Love, Abba, Father, Yahuwah. Praise Abba. Let me take a sip of this. Everybody would guess what it is because, it's yes, it's apple juice and water. I took a big sip. I took several swallows. Okay. Chapter 31. Praise Abba. Amen. <laughs> and he heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Yaakov has taken away all that was our father's and from what belonged to our fathers 
our Father, he has made all this wealth. And Yaakov would look at the face of Lavan and see that it was not toward him as before. It wasn't what Yaakov was doing, it was what Yahweh was doing. He was making the goats speckled and streaked and spotted. Yaakov can't control that. And he did a thing, a ritual with the rods where he peeled the bark and made them streaked and whatnot. Maybe Yahweh told him to do that and Yahweh caused the goats and the sheep to bear spotted and speckled because that was his desire to bless Yaakov. Okay, let's continue. And Yahweh said to Yaakov, Return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I am with you. And he's not speaking about the land uh, that he was living in there because those are his relatives. He's talking about going back to his father, Yitzchak. And Yaakov sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field to his flock. This is important, so that's why I've got it bold and uh, highlighted in yellow. And he said to them, I see your father's face, that it is not toward me as before, but the Elohim of my father has been with me. That's why he's being blessed. That's why his flocks are growing, is because Yahweh is with him. And you know that I have served your father with all my strength, and he had. Yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but Elohim did not allow him to do evil to me. In other words, he blessed him regardless. But when he, when he said this, the speckled are your wages, then all the flocks are more speckled. And when he said this, the streaked are your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked. So Elohim has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me on a course of time. He's rolling it over and everything's coming out in Yaakov's favor. And believe you me, if you live for Yahweh and serve him with all your heart, he will make you to prosper too in ways that you never would have otherwise. Now, he doesn't mean that everybody's going to be rich or everybody that serves him is going to be rich because there are servants of Yahuwah who never had anything and remained poor all their lives. And I know people today who serve Yahuwah with a passion, but they don't have a lot of money, but they get by. They always have everything they need. And that's me. I'm not wealthy except in faith, except in my Elohim, and there I am wealthy. Praise Abba. That's the place to be wealthy. And it came to be at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and looked in a dream and saw the rams which leaped on the flock, upon the flocks were streaked, speckled, and mottled. Um, that's spotted, same as spotted. And the messenger of Elohim and I believe this to be Yeshua, spoke to me in a dream saying, Yaakov. And I said, here I am. And he said, lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and spotted. For I have seen all that Lavan is doing to you. And he says, now this was a messenger. He says, I am the El of Baith El. That being a messenger and saying, I am the El of Baith El, I am Elohim. It can be no other if it's a messenger, but the messenger of Yahweh, which is Yeshua himself. I am the El of Baith El, where you anointed the standing column and where you made a vow to me. Now rise up, get out of this land, and return to the land of your relatives. And Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Do we still have any portion or inheritance in our father's house? 
Uh oh. It's jumping tonight. But it's because uh, I'm having trouble with the mouse. Okay, let me get back to where it was. Okay. And Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Do we have still any portion or inheritance in our father's house? Are we not reckoned by him as strangers? For he has sold us and also entirely consumed our silver. He sold them, his daughters, to Yaakov for seven years of labor. Each seven years of labor. So that's 14 years of his life right there. And he goes ahead and he's going to work six more for Laban after Laban's face fell and turned from him. For all the wealth which Elohim has taken from our father are ours and our children's. Now then, do whatever Elohim has told you. Do you not think that uh, that Yaakov shared with him the truth about Yahweh, the things that his father had taught him, and the things that his grandfather had taught him? Uh, taught uh, Yitzchak. And Yitzchak taught him in turn. So Yo Yaakov arose and put his sons and his wives on camels. And he drove off all his livestock and all his possessions which he had acquired, his property of the livestock which he had acquired in Paran Aram, to go to his father, Yitzchak, in the land of Kenaan. Now, I'm not saying that, that he did the right thing, but it's getting up and going. But he did tell him Send me off. Send me back to my father's place. So Laban, even after he chased him down, he knew. He says, I know you miss your father. So he understands. Okay. Pay attention to this next section. This is a little bit amazing. And when Laban had gone to shear his sheep, Rachel stole the house idols that were her father's. Why, of all things, would she steal idols? Had she not listened to anything that Yaakov had said? That Yaakov had told about his father, Yitzchak? That Yitzchak had told Yaakov and uh, also um, Esau. I couldn't think of Esau. Uh, he told his sons the things that his father had told him. Do you think that he has not shared those, those same things with his wives. So why was she still an idol? What? After doing some digging, I found that possession of the house idols called teraphim indicates a person's right of inheritance, thus showing Rachel's probable interest in having them. So that's the, that's the way I figured that she stole them. That's why. And Yaakov deceived Laban, the Aramean, Syrian, same thing, because he did not inform him that he was about to flee. And he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and headed toward the mountains of Gilad. And on the third day, Laban was told that Yaakov had fled. Then he took his brothers with him, and pursued him for seven days' journey, and he overtook him in the mountains of Gilad. But in a dream by night, Elohim came to Lavan, the Aramean, and said to him, Guard yourself that you do not speak to Yaakov either good or evil. Then Lavan overtook Yaakov. Now Yaakov had pitched his tent, in the mountains, and Laban with his brothers pitched, uh, pitched in the mountains of Gilad. So they were both on the mountain, maybe not in the same place, but both on the mountain. And Laban said to Yaakov, Excuse me. What have you done that you deceived me and driven my daughters off like the captives taken with a sword? 
why did you flee secretly and deceive me and not inform me? And I would have sent you away with joy and songs with tambourine and lyre. Well, remember, he already asked him to send him away and he had not yet done that. And I don't know how long it was since he asked him. It may have been a week. It may have been a month. It may have been a year. But he had already asked him to send him away. Now, he should have been strong and steadfast and confident in Yahweh his Elohim that Yahweh would not allow anything bad to happen to him and faced Laban and said, I am leaving. We are going to go. So we want to go with your blessing. That would have been the thing to do. But he was afraid that Laban would not let him have his wives and not let him have his children. He considered him, and we're going to read in just a moment, he considered everything his. And we'll see that in what he says coming up. But I can understand Laban as well. He says, and you did not allow me to kiss my sons, his grandchildren, and, uh, and my daughters. Now you have been foolish to do this. This is true. That's why it is written in the scripture. It's true. And uh, Yahweh wanted us to see that Yaakov should have faced him. He should have faced him and been a man about it and not been a fraidy cat, knowing that Yahweh would take care of everything that he needs. So it is in the power of my hand to do evil to you. But the Elohim of your father spoke to me last night saying, guard yourself that you do not speak evil to Yaakov, either good or that you don't speak to Yaakov, either good or evil. And now you have gone because you greatly long for your father's house. You see, he says it. But why did you steal my mighty ones? Now, the thing that I told you a moment ago about when you have these uh, house gods, it, it, in that day, it meant that you had the inheritance. So whoever holds the mighty ones holds the inheritance. And maybe that's why uh, Rachel took them, but she didn't need them because Yahweh is going to provide for them much greater than any inheritance Laban could give them. And Yaakov answered and said to Laban, because I was afraid, for I said, lest you tear your daughters away from me. With whomever you find your mighty ones, do not let him live. He didn't know that, Leah, uh, that Rachel had stolen those idols. In the presence of our brothers, say for yourself, what is with me, and take it with you. For Yaakov did not know that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Yaakov's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the tents of the two female servants, but he did not find them. And he came out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's tent. She was wise. Now Rachel had taken the house idols and put them in the camel saddle and sat on them. And Laban searched all about the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my master that I am unable to rise before you, for the way of women is with me. I've heard excuses like that before of you <laughs> and he searched but did not find the house idols and Yaakov was wroth and contended with Laban and Yaakov answered and said to Laban what is my transgression what is my sin that you have hotly pursued me now that you have searched all my goods what have what have you found Oops, let me hit undo right quick. Okay. Now that you have searched all my goods, what have you found of all your household goods? Set it here before my brothers and before your brothers, and let them decide between the two of us. These 20 years. Now he tells him the truth here, and Yahweh made him bold to have him speak up like this to Laban and just be honest with him. These twenty years I have been with you, your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried their young, 
and I have not eaten the rams of your sheep. That which was torn by beast I did not bring to you. I myself bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was. By day the heat consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sheep fled, my sleep fled from my eyes. And these twenty years I have been in your house, I served you fourteen years for t your two daughters, and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages ten times. Unless the Elohim of my father, the Elohim of Abraham, and the fear, we're going to go over this, uh, of Yitzchak. The word here is the Hebrew word, uh, 6343, and it is pechad. And uh, that's spelled uh, pe, chet, and dalet. And um, I would go over the meaning of this word, but um, Alan Horvath has already done this. And I've watched his video this week. I've watched it two or three or four times because uh, he makes a lot of sense. He understands it well. And I have a lot of confidence in Alan Horvath. So um, I almost said Horvath, <laughs> Hebrew style. I don't know. Okay, but anyway, it's not really the fear of Yitzchak, but it is. It's the fear of Yitzchak. It's the dread of Yitzchak. It is the dread of his mighty Elohim. And he is to be respected. He is to be feared and dreaded if you're not on his side. But if you're on his side, you are in awe of him. And that's what it really is. Awesome. So, I hope and pray that that helps you to understand why he says, and the fear of Yitzchak, the father of Yaakov, had been with me. You would now have sent me away empty-handed. Elohim has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands. If he had not worked and been lazy, Yahoo wouldn't have done these things for him. But he saw the labor of his hands, that he worked, and rendered judgment last night. And Laban answered and said to Yaakov, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and this flock is my flock, and all that you see is mine. But what shall I do today to these, my daughters, or to their children whom they have born. And now come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and it shall be a witness between you and me. So Yaakov took a stone and set it up as a standing column. And Yaakov said to his brothers, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. It was a big heap too. And they ate there on the heap. And Lavan called it Yegar Sahadutha, but Yaakov called it Galed. Now, Alan, according to Alan, I don't know if this is correct or not. Alan says this word, these words, what uh, Lavan called it, was uh, Aramaic, and then what uh, Yaakov called it was Galeth, but I did not get a chance to actually go and, and uh, search that and see if it actually was Aramaic or not, uh, but I will do that in the future because it's on my heart. And Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me today. That is why its name was called Galeth. In Hebrew, Galeth means, what else? Witness heap. <laughs> also mitzvah because he said let Yahweh watch between you and me when we were out of each other's sight you see this heap of stones would be seen for a long way because it's on top of a mountain anyway and a heap of stones that's big enough to see from a long distance away uh, would be a, a sign that 
when they were far away from each other, that Yahweh would be watching between them and be able to see them, all of them. And he said, If you afflict my daughters, or if you take other wives besides my daughters, although no man is with us, see, Elohim is witness between you and me. And Laban said to Yaakov, See this heap, and see this standing column, which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this standing column is a witness that I do not pass beyond this heap to you, and you do not pass beyond this heap and this standing column to me for evil. The Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Nahor, and the Elohim of their father rightly rule between us. And Yaakov swore, and he didn't swear by the Elohim of uh, Abraham, the Elohim of Nahor, because he might have been swearing by a false god, because Nahor worshipped false gods. And so did uh, Pirach, Abraham's father. So that's why Yaakov swore by the fear, the pechad, respect of his father Yitzchak. And Yaakov brought an offering on the mountain and called his brothers to eat bread. And they ate bread and spent the night on the mountain. And Laban rose up early in the morning and kissed his sons and daughters, grand, grandsons and daughters, and blessed them. And Laban left and returned to his place. See? All's well that ends well. Amen? Okay. Uh, I'm going to look into the chat for a moment. And Candace has come in and, and said something. I'm glad to see she's actually getting into the into the uh, chat. The rods used are actually used for fertility purposes. There is scientific proof of it, this channel with Ken. I can send you an article. Please do so, Candace, because I didn't have time to research that out. I'm very busy at work, and I work all day, and then I come home, and I'm studying pretty much all night, and uh, that I didn't get to research as much as I wanted to. But uh, there's always the next time we go over this, right? <laughs> and it probably won't be that long. Dave, Debbie, and Kaylee says, in Tiffany's study on the rod, she talks about Hashatan's evil rod also. Okay, yeah, uh, I remember something about that as well. But anyway, we'll continue on. And uh, praise all before, I have got the, the best crew in the world. I mean, uh, Mishpaka, our, our ladies and gentlemen in blue, are just the best and uh they're sincere and they pray for you and they love you they love all of our mishpaka and i'm i'm telling you right now i would have other people with wrenches as well if yahweh would allow me allow me to but uh i think that uh what i've got is good for the time and if somebody is called later by Yahweh, he'll tell me and I'll tell them. Maybe Yahweh will tell them as well. But uh, let's continue. Chapter 32. Let me take a drink first. And Yaakov went on his way. And the messengers of Elohim met him. And when Yaakov saw them, he said, This is the camp of Elohim. And he called the name of that place Machanaim. Machanaim means two camps. And he was referring to the camp of Elohim as one camp and his family and herds as a second camp. So, and Yaakov sent messengers, not the messengers that were Yahweh's messengers. He sent messengers or dispatchers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the field of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Say 
uh, this to my master Esau. Your servant Yaakov said this. He's being very humble before his brother Esau. Okay. I have sojourned with Laban and have stayed there until now. And I have bulls and donkeys, flocks and male and female servants. And I have sent to inform my master to find favor in your eyes. So the messengers returned to Yaakov, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he is also coming to meet you, and four hundred men with him. And Yaakov was greatly afraid. Why is he afraid? Uh, we should be asking ourselves the same question. Why are we afraid? Or why did we do this? Or why did we do that? Do we not trust Yahweh, our Elohim, to take care of us no matter what? But it's easy for us to point the fingers. Why is he afraid? I mean, we see all the wonderful things that's happening. Well, because he's a man. And men don't always stay steadfast in faith and trust in Yahweh. So, Yaakov was greatly afraid and distressed. So he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two groups. And he said, if Esau comes to the one group and attacks it, then the other group which is left shall escape. And Yaakov said, O Elohim of my father, Abraham, and Elohim of my father, Yitzchak, Yahweh, who said to me, Return to your land and to your relatives, and I do good to you. I do not deserve the least of all the kind acts and all the truth which you have shown your servant. For I passed over this Yardain with my staff. That's all he had was his staff. And now I have become two groups. He has grown so much, and he's very, very wealthy. Twenty years ago, he only owned his own staff. So you can see how Yahweh had blessed him with many bitter blessings. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and shall smite me and the mother with the children. For you said, I shall certainly do good to you and shall make your seed as the sand of the sea, which are too numerous to count. And he spent the night there and took what came to his hand as a present for, his, for Esau, his brother. 200, then this, now this is the present. I've got it outlined in yellow. 200 female goats and 20 male goats. 200 ewes and 20 rams. 30 milk camels and their colts, 40 cows and 10 bulls, and 20 female donkeys and 10 foals. And he gave into the hand of his servants every drove by itself and said to his servants, Pass over before me and put some distance between drove and drove. So every set of animals was a drove, and he put distance between each and every one of those so that the first would arrive long before the second would arrive. Then he commanded the first one, saying, When Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you, saying, To whom uh, do you belong, and where are you going, and whose are these in front of you? Then you shall say, They are your servant, Yaakov's. It is a present sent to my master Esau, and see, he is also behind us. And so he commanded the second and the third and all who followed the droves, saying, Speak to Esau this same word when you find him. And you shall say, Also look, your servant Yaakov is behind us. For he said, Let me appease him with the present that goes before me. And after that, see his face. He might accept me. And the present passed over before him, but he himself spent the night in the camp. This is a very interesting part coming up here as well. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two female servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford of Yabok. And he took them and sent them over the stream and sent whatever 
uh, sent over what he had. And Yaakov was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. The Hebrew word for this man is the word ish. And that would indicate, according to the Hebrew I studied, indicated that it was a mortal man. But in no way does it appear that it is a mortal man. He appeared to look like a mortal man, but there is no way that it was a mortal man because of what he did. And so it looks like a mortal man that's wrestling with Yaakov. And I personally think it is Yeshua that uh, he is wrestling with. Something you should all chew on and uh, pray about. Um, Yaakov was outmatched, but he prevailed in his battle, doing everything to persevere. Have we not learned in recent studies even about perseverance? Persevere. That's what we need to do. That's what Yahweh wants from each and every one of us. Let us reason together, says Yahweh. Persevere. Talk with Abba. Talk with him about everything. I mean everything. You know, sometimes it's a little inconvenient to have Yahweh with us always, being in his presence at all times. It's a little inconvenient for a human being because human beings like to do the things human beings like to do. But if you are in the presence of Yahweh, you can't do that. You've got to live a Kodesh life. And so sometimes it's a little bit inconvenient being with Yahweh all the time. But I tell you what, I would rather be with Yahweh all the time than away from Yahweh all the time. That's the better choice. It's either with him all the time or away from him all the time. <laughs> oh. And when he saw that he did not overcome him, when Yeshua saw that he did not overcome him, that he persevered, that he stayed in there and kept wrestling, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Yaakov's hip was dislocated as he wrestled with him. Now, he just did that. He could have done that at the beginning. But Yaakov did not stop wrestling with him. His hip was out of joint and probably was in pain. But he continued. He persevered. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I'm not letting you go until you have blessed me. Uh, does anybody in our Mishpachah understand uh, why he's talking about um, why Yeshua said to him, let me go for the day breaks. It may be because of some information that they had back in that day that uh, daybreak was special and uh, a special time for the messengers of Yahweh to appear before him. So it may be something to do with that. But if anybody has anything to say on that, uh, let us please let us hear or even... Um, in the comment section below the video, after the video is already played, uh, you can mention it there as well. Let me go before, uh, before the day breaks. But he said, I'm not letting you go until you have blessed me. So he asked him, what is your name? He knew his name. And uh, he said, Yaakov. And he said, your name is no longer Yaakov, but Yisrael, because you have striven with Elohim. Must have been Yeshua, right? Who else could it have been? It couldn't have been just one of the regular messengers because they are not considered Elohim. But Yeshua, the messenger of Yahweh, is Elohim. You have striven with El Elohim and with men and have overcome. He declared him the winner. He declared Yaakov the winner because he persevered. And you will be declared winner if you also persevere. And Yaakov asked him, saying, Please let me know your name. And he said, Why do you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. <laughs> that leaves a little suspense, doesn't it? Why have you asked about my name? Uh, 
suspense does this good once in a while. And you uh, dig into that as well. Chew on that. And Yaakov called the name of the place Peniel. And he said, For I have seen Elohim face to face in my life is preserved. We know that nobody can see the face of Yahweh and live. So we know that he saw Elohim but it was Yeshua in the form of a man. That's what he saw. And that was what was permitted for mankind to see was Yeshua in the form of a man, but not Elohim. Uh, I can't imagine what would happen if you saw the face of Elohim in this conditioned flesh. Okay. Peniel means face of El. He did not see Yeshua. I meant uh, Yahweh. He saw Yeshua in the form of a man. And the sun rose on him as he passed over Penuel, and he limped on his hip. I can imagine. That is why the children of Israel to this day do not eat the sinew of the hip, which is on the socket of the thigh, because he touched the socket of the thigh of Yaakov in the sinew of the hip. Praise Abba. That is our study for tonight, Chavarim. And uh, next week we will see what happens when Yaakov meets his brother Esau after 20 years. Um, if we have any comments or specific questions relating to the study tonight, uh, you know now is the time to share them. So, and I might remind you uh, that we have the drawing next week for the beautiful copy of the Hallelujah Scriptures along with a names book and along with a marker, a bookmark. But tonight we are going to be drawing for a names book. So you're hearing all these names that I'm sharing with you and these are the same names that are shared in this names book. Huban Yeshua says, this channel with Ken, prayers for Brother Gabriel for guidance and peace and shalom. Okay, the prayers for Gabriel, Mishpaka, remember him when you pray. And uh, I'm sure you guys know more about who Gabriel is than, than I do because you've been in the chat and I've been in, in the word. Okay, praise Abba Father Yahuwah. Okay, well, I best get to it. And uh, let me get my hat and a drum roll. I'll set this down. A drum roll. I'm going to try to mix these up a little bit and then get just one. Last week I ended up with two. I've got one this week. And let's see. Wow. Can you set guys see that? I'll let me change let me change this to the zoom screen so that you can see it better. Hmm. Okay. Can you see this? Albany. Hallelujah scriptures. That's twice for you, sister. Or is it? Yeah, yeah that's twice for you. <laughs> Praise Abba. <laughs> okay, so Albany, Hallelujah Scriptures, gets the main meanings book. Okay, I'm sure she can use them. So, Praise Abba, Father Yahweh. And uh, I think that's everything for tonight. We have run over tonight, but... And I looked at the clock earlier and said, uh, we're going to run over. But Abba just said, just keep going. Just keep going. I'll take care. <laughs> and he is. He's taking care of everything. But now we know what it's time for. Anybody wants to say it, you just can. <laughs> oh, Albany, Hallelujah Scripture says, can I have this book? Okay, Albany, I tell you what. If it's okay with you, sister, we'll just draw for another name. Ken, draw again, Albany says. Uh, she had the, you know, the same thing that I thought of. We'll just draw again. If she has the book, she doesn't need it. 
Oh. Can you guys read that? I think it says Lena Butler. So congratulations, Lena Butler. <laughs> Praise Abba. Email me, Lena, at thischannelwithken at yahoo.com. Uh, my email is easy to find. It's in a lot of places uh, on my page. And then uh, uh, that's, <laughs> that's easy for you to find, my, my email. But email me your address, Lena, uh, please. Okay. Is Lena still in here? I mean, have you guys seen her? Oh, she's right up there. Yeah, she's, she's still here. So praise Abba Father Yahweh. Congratulations, Lena Butler. And uh, what did I say? I already saw it in there. A lot of people are saying, take it away, Alan. So we'll say, Alan, take it away. Take it away, Alan. I sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is His name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with the wind of your nostrils, the waters were heaped up. The floods stood like a wall. The depths became stiff in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I pursue, I overtake, I divide the spoil. My being is satisfied on them. I draw out my sword, my hand destroys them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you? Oh, Yahuwah, among the mighty ones. Who is like you? Great in Kodesha, awesome in praises. Working wonders, you stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled, anguish gripped inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips then all the inhabitants of Canaan melted. Fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm. 
They are as silent as a stone Until your people pass over Oh, Yahuwah Until the people whom you have bought Pass over You bring them in and plant them In the mountain of your inheritance In the place, oh, Yahuwah Which you have made for your own dwelling The meek dash, oh, Yahuwah Which your hands have prepared Yahuwah reigns forever And ever